welcome to You Can Cook, where kids are the stars, where we have fun while we're making easy and nutritious food. We're thrilled to be continuing with our series of You Can Cook shows here at PCTV. I'm Lisa Kazarski, registered and licensed dietitian nutritionist for Berkshire Health Systems Operation Better Start. I have here with me today Chef Tom Tenuta, our chef from Soma Catering, who will be cooking with our students today. And joining us our special guest students, local students, um, Charlie and Carter. Welcome. Thank you. So our theme for today is, for our show, is kids' faves. So what do I mean by that? What do I mean by kids' faves? What do you think we'll be doing? Favorites. Or Favorites, right. Do you have a favorite? Oh, I like macaroni and cheese. Uh, pizza. Pizza? pizza mac and good. Cheese, do you good. make them at home? Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes people buy a convenience way of doing it, right? A convenience mm -hmm. box thing or they take out, right? Yeah. So Chef Tom's going to show us today, starting with mac and cheese, how to make the food a little, tweak it a little bit to make it a little lighter, a little bit healthier in some way. Do you think, do you think we can do that? Yeah. All right. All right. Let's go. We're ready. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Mac and cheese, good choice. That's what we have today. What's your favorite mac and cheese? Um. Oh. My mom's mac and cheese. Good answer. Good answer. Very smart. You always yeah. got to say your mom's. <laughs> All right. So today, our mac and cheese, it's going to be accompanied with some roasted broccoli, mm -hmm. very important, veggies, and some peach. Um, we can use any type of fruit as well. What, what fruits are in, what other fruits do you like? Uh, apples. What's in season? Apples. Yeah, apples are stored. What else? Um, I like strawberries. Strawberries. And what about vegetables? Because we don't have to do just broccoli. Today we're going to do broccoli. What other vegetables would you eat? Uh, carrots. Carrots, good. Uh, yeah. yeah. Celery, carrots, carrots, celery. Good, good, good. All right, so with our recipe today, <clears throat> we start off with cooked pasta. So we can use elbow. You don't have to use elbow. You can use anything, any type of pasta. Mm. You can use bow tie pasta. Right? Yeah. Fine too. Or the little pasta mm -hmm. that looks like rice. Any of that. We could uh, even take it a step further and use a whole wheat pasta. Mm -hmm. You know, to make it a little more healthier than we are today. Um, so when we begin, we cook off the pasta, so that's already done. Right. All right. And while that's cooking, we'll be cutting up some broccoli. So if you two can start cutting up the broccoli, both of you, okay. and then adding it to our uh, pan, we're going to roast the broccoli, which will give it a little bit of a different flavor than just blanching. It'll bring out a little sweetness in in the uh, in the broccoli. And what we'll do is. We'll season it with a little salt and pepper. We can toss it in a little olive oil and a little bit of breadcrumbs on top. Or even you could put a little bit of cheese on top. Good way to get the broccoli in. Chef Tom, are we going to add that to our mac and cheese? No, we're going to serve it on the side, but there's no problem with adding it to it either. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That or some spinach. I didn't hear anybody say spinach there today. Any spinach fans? I had spinach for dinner, well, dinner that's last good. night. All right. Good. Very good. All right, so we're going to let Carter keep going with the broccoli. Okay. Now, Charlie, for our recipe. All right, real simple. We have our cooked pasta, our pot, which we're going to have warm on the stove. So we add, add now our pasta. All right. So we'll be adding that, and then. The next thing you want to add are the, the rest of the ingredients. This is real simple. All right, we're going to add a little laughing cow cheese, which is like a little cheese spread. Well, that's an easy one for melting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and that'll okay. melt quickly. A lot of families have those already on hand. Because mm -hmm. you know, we're going to put it right in there. Cheese, so that's a great idea. See, we're trying to make this healthier, but just as easy as the box stuff. Um, and we'll talk about the box stuff right. in, in, in a couple minutes here, but and then I like this. Going to add our butter. So go ahead and put the two tablespoons of butter, which is right there. That's all two tablespoons. Go. Whack. There we go. Hit it right on the side. Boom. There we go. Put the rest in there. Go ahead. Put the rest. That's two tablespoons. Okay. Great. All right. Next, we have some milk, and we could always use a. How could how could we improve on the milk or or change it? Cut down some of the fat with the milk, say. Fat-free milk. Fat-free milk. Mm -hmm. We could. We could do that. So let's put the milk in next. And we 
can do this all in one pot, right? We'll do it all in one pot. Once the pasta is cooked, we're, our pot's going to be warm. All right. It's easy. And now we'll sprinkle in some cheese. And what kind of cheese are we using? And this one we're using cheddar. What other cheeses okay. do you like? Uh, Swiss. Swiss. You could use Swiss. Mm -hmm. I like American cheese. Mary, you could use American cheese. Any of them. All of it. Yep. Now, is there any cheese that wouldn't work in this? Not, I mean, not really. I mean, if, mm -hmm. even if you use the hard cheese, you'd have to grate it first. Grate like it real fine, parmesan. like a Parmesan or a Romano. Um, but you can buy most of those already grated. Mm -hmm. So really, with any recipe, always, always be creative with it. You know, put in what your favorite vegetable is. Maybe what your favorite pasta shape is. That's a great idea. Make so, it your own. Exactly. And so as we're putting this in, we're stirring. We have another one working here on the heat. So we'll continually stir it until all that cheese melts. We'll season it with a little salt and pepper, a couple pinches of salt, a pinch of pepper. All right. And Carter's doing a great job cutting up our broccoli. There we go. All right, so then this would go on the heat, and there we have our mac and cheese. Next is our broccoli. Now what are we using the breadcrumbs for? The we breadcrumbs we're gonna put on top of the broccoli. Ah, okay. So. We have our broccoli there cut up, and this would be great. It's a nice size you could even put right into the mac and cheese. That would be nice. Now, if you want to hide the vegetable, mm. I think about that sometimes because some people right don't like green things in their food, right? Do you know anybody like that, you guys? Anybody that doesn't like green in their food? My brother. Oh. Ah, okay. I'll have to talk so to him. sometimes we have to find another vegetable we could, <laughs> we could hide in it. So can we do something like carrots or butternut squash? Yeah, absolutely. We could roast a butternut squash or an acorn squash and put it right into the mac and mm -hmm. cheese. We could put in a blender even and put it in. Yeah. And right. Mix it right in. So we have our broccoli chopped, okay? Mm -hmm. The next we want to put a little bit of olive oil. So sprinkle a little bit of olive oil on there. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Good. Go ahead, sprinkle a little olive oil. And since you were so good at doing the salt and pepper. Great. And remember, if you're, if you're doing a vegetable like the broccoli, you're adding another layer of vitamins to your food. You're adding vitamin C. You're adding some fiber that, if you use white pasta, will not be in there. So, you know, you're just bringing it up a notch. Okay, yeah. now, some of our breadcrumbs, seasoned breadcrumbs. So you can make your own breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. Take bread, put it in. Everyone, does everyone have a... Food processor at home. Right? Yeah. yeah. There you go. You can even use a cheese grater and grate the bread. Mm. You know, you can let it get stale or toasted. Mm. Right, and then put some herbs, or you can buy them. Always be careful when buying them because there's a lot of salt. Mm. You know. All right. So sprinkle some of those on there. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Anybody can sprinkle. Making your own breadcrumbs is also cost effective. It's a good way to use up the heels of the bread that. A lot of times, you know, might be left over in some of the families. So, um, just a good cost savings idea. So, once that's ready, we've put our salt, pepper, olive oil, breadcrumbs. We'll put this in the oven until it gets nice and brown. Oh, look at that. And look yeah. how big they got. <laughs> <laughs> Smells so good so, too. And that's what they look like. So we just we did big ones earlier, and, um, and then we, got this then we have that, and then we have the mac and cheese. So now we've made a nice complete lunch or dinner. Mm -hmm. um, our vegetables. And I just want to show you know a comparison here. We've got um, a comparison you know for you guys to see too, for everybody to see that you know we can have box mac and cheese, which is going to have what going to have yellow dye in it, especially if you use the, you know, it's got the orangey stuff in it. Um, it's got a high amount of sodium, 2,400 milligrams in a box. That's like a day, you know, more than a day's allowance. Whereas if you make it, the one pot, all you've got is the macaroni and cheese, um, maybe, and some milk and salt, and a little bit of the coloring from the, from the natural cheese, but, and the sodium is only 600. I mean, still, you know, still a little high, but not 2,400 from having the box product. So there really is a difference, you know, we, we can cut down on the, um, the ingredient list and what we make. Um, that's always a, a bonus. So 
Great job, guys. All right, now the taste. that a taste. Mm. What about our broccoli? Good? Mm -hmm. You like the broccoli done that way? Yeah. Great. Good. Mm. All right. So now you're all ready to cook at home. Mm -hmm. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Enjoy. So you, you can see that macaroni and cheese doesn't need to be a hard process. It doesn't have to be the long thing where you're putting it in the oven and baking it for an hour or whatever. It can be on top of the stove just like a boxed product, but actually something that's um, got less processed ingredients, less sodium. So here we have it, and we've got a complete lunch or dinner for, for everybody mm -hmm. at home with including the fruit and the vegetable. So um, thanks for joining us. We'll be back with our next segment. We're back cooking with Charlie, Carter, and Chef Tom. And we've got a new recipe that we're going to do for our kids' faves. So somebody had said before one of their favorites was fries. So, and what do we think of when we think of fries? What's oftentimes the complaint about fries? That they're what? Not crispy enough. No. True. Well, what makes them crispy? Frying. Frying. Frying Very right? delicious. Yes. Right? So mm. we're going to, Chef Tom's going to show us how to make fries healthier, okay, or a little yeah. less greasy. So, in so Yeah, instead of deep fat frying or also buying them frozen, already cut, a lot of times make sure you watch the ingredients, as always, we always say, just to see what's in them. And our ingredients today, we have potato, key, salt, pepper, basil, and a little bit of cheese to sprinkle on. What other? What else would? What else could we put on there? What other herbs? Is there another herb that you like, or um, no. you could put on, or another cheese? Maybe. Maybe. The American cheese. Yeah, you could. You mm. could. The hard cheese will work a little bit better. Yeah. Like for this once we bake it. Yeah. 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 That'll work a little bit better. Now this recipe is quick and easy. You're gonna have a hot oven, all right? About 425 degrees. Okay. And you show everyone how we're slicing these. We're, we try to slice them a qu uh, about a quarter of an inch, but if not, we can dice them. We can do anything with them. Mm. It doesn't matter what the shape is. Um, and we'll just, we'll just cut them down. The key when we make these is that we're going to lay them on the pan in a single layer. If we don't lay them in a single layer, what do you think would happen? What would you be your guess? What if we started stacking them up on the... On so the tray. Only one of them's gonna get fried. Yeah, or baked. <laughs> or baked. Yeah, mm. right. Yeah. We'll have we'll have a real mushy one, and then we'll have a real raw one. And uh, you had mentioned you ate raw potatoes. How are they? They're not good. They're not good. So we're not gonna do raw potatoes. All right. So start layering them out. We're gonna layer these out single layer. Right. We're gonna. Uh, you can use a little bit of olive oil. We're gonna use a, a cooking spray. Uh, a vegetable oil cooking spray. You can, there's olive oil. I think there's butter flavor. There's all kinds of things out there and um, you for get it. The ones that don't have aerosol. So yep. if you're concerned about that, organic ones are out there mm -hmm. too. So layer them all as long as they're as long as they're not overlapping each other. There we go, like a deck of cards. Chef Tom, what's the key to getting these crispy? Well, <laughs> crispy is making sure the oven is nice and hot. Try to keep them thin, and mm -hmm. they'll. You know, they'll just puff a little bit, and as soon as they're brown and tender to the touch, they're ready. Nice. So we're keeping the skin on, I noticed. Yeah, we're going to keep the skin on. Mm -hmm. What's in the skin? We're washing them, though. That's one thing we're going to make sure we did. Yeah. We, we washed all the potatoes. They've already been washed. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to make sure you just scrub the skin. Any, any dirt or anything else that was lurking is off. So what are we getting by having the skin on the potato? Want to take a guess? Carter, Charlie, what do you uh, think? It gets crispy. 
Mm-hmm. Is there some nutrition? Yeah. Yeah, like what? Do you have any idea? No. Uh, like vitamins? Or... Yeah, there's a good vitamin right under the skin. It's vitamin C. It's right under the skin on a potato. And of course, when we, keep, when we eat the skin or the peel on something, um, we're getting fiber, more fiber that way. So, a way to right. preserve some nutrition. All right. We have everything on our sheet pen. Charlie, you're going in. All right. <laughs> Just a little spray over. And then Carter, you're going to salt and pepper. Okay. A little bit. Woohoo! There we go. Good. All right. Okay. Nice. Now, if we're going to sprinkle everything with some salt and pepper. And also, we get to control now. Not, not buying it out of a package, we control our salt, mm -hmm. our pepper, whatever herb we want, whatever cheese. You're, you're in control of your food. How about sweet potatoes? Do you like sweet potatoes? No. No? And then Couldn't I won't talk out. to you. Carter, <laughs> you like sweet potatoes? Good. Yeah. All right. So you can do this with sweet potatoes the exact same way. You can leave the skin on. Oh, yeah, we've had yeah. potato chips before. Perfect. All right. Nice. All right, then, even though you don't like sweet potatoes, we'll let you cheese it. Yay. And you don't have to put the cheese on there. Nope. That we can don't keep need it yep. simpler for some family members or people that have issues with cheese. And you can treat these just like a fry and have them as a um, accompaniment to something, like a steak, or um, and have ketchup with them if you like. Yeah. All right. Dipping. Smelling good. So smelling this will go into a hot here. oven. So 425. Oh, and look at that. And and just like, like that. that. Look at that, huh? You like that? Is your oven that fast at home? No. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> How long will these cook for? So this, depending on your oven, um, you know, they're, they're, they probably will take anywhere from 15 to 20, maybe 25 minutes. Um, so it all depends on your, on your oven at home. So but while keys, Chef all right. Tom is getting those ready, We're gonna have I'm going to show a little bit of the, uh, the nutritionals here. So our homemade fries just have the potatoes, the Parmesan cheese, put a little the cheese basil, if you want and the there. cooking spray. So all whole go. ingredients. And look at this. Look at this, guys. The ingredients and some, some other fries, some like packaged fries. Look at how long it is. You've got hydrogenated oils. You've got um, sugars. Dextrose is a type of sugar. Here, pronounce that. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, if you can't pronounce it, uh, you don't need to eat it. And the calories are real high on this. And so the big thing is the fat content's lower, so it lowers the calories on our fresh fries here. So highly recommend trying to do and doing your own. Simple enough. What do you think? Pretty easy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tastes good? Yeah. How do you yeah. like them? Good. Tastes good? Tastes good. Is all right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Did you do anything else with them? No. no. Would you dip them in something? No. Would you dip them in ketchup, you think? I'm good. <laughs> yeah, put vinegar on them, something like that. Ooh, I like the vinegar. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. It's all good. All right. Thanks for joining us for this segment. We'll be back. Thanks for joining us today on You Can Cook with Chef Tom and I and Charlie and Carter uh, for, our, for our segment on Kids Faves Remade. Um, we made some delicious uh, fries, we made of fries and our mac and cheese and the uh, roasted broccoli to accompaniment. And I think you both would agree, right? That it was just, just tasty as could be, right? Yeah. Yep, okay, so here's a Kids Faves Remade Accept it. All right. Thanks for joining us.